All right, Musa here. We're going to go through some uh, more complex dynamic situations. We're going to talk about elevators and a few other things. This is more in tune to the AP college level. Uh, it's certainly not inappropriate for high school physics, but you don't find it in there as often. And the first thing I want to talk about is uh, are really the, what, what the normal force is, okay? So we're going to have a person chilling on the ground. So this is the ground. I'm just drawing it there for you on reference, okay? And they're ha hanging out on the ground. They're going to experience a weight down and a normal force up, right? Because they're just hanging out on the ground. Now, if I were to slide a scale underneath this person, we all know that that scale will measure, well, we, well, at least we think we know this, right? It'll measure weight. I'm telling you that's not quite true. That scale isn't actually measuring weight. What the scale is actually telling you is what it is pushing up to support you. So it's actually the normal force. Scales actually read normal force. In fact, our own ability to determine whether or not we are experiencing weight is our own natural ability to detect the normal force acting on us. You've heard these concepts of weightless, right? Well, let me tell you this. There's no such thing as weightless. There's always everywhere in this universe some level of gravity acting on you. Remember, weight equals mg. There will always be some acceleration due to gravity acting on you. So anywhere in this universe, I don't care if you're in the deepest parts of space, there's going to be some level of g acting on you. There's no real such thing as weightless. But we've heard this term before and we use it in science all the time. When we talk about weightless, we're talking about the apparent loss of the normal force. So it's really no, not no gravity, but no normal force. Think of the times in which we hear the term weightless. You hear the term weightless when you're in free fall, right? If I were to jump out of a plane, I'm weightless. You feel weightless when you're maybe at the apex of a roller coaster or even going through a roller coaster loop. You'll feel experiences of weightlessness. There are many other scenarios in which we can properly utilize the term weightless as long as we're referring to no normal force. Because when we're in free fall, we still have weight. So we're not actually weightless. So the best way of thinking about your own weight, whether you think you are heavier or lighter than normal, is your own ability to detect the normal force acting on you. So if you feel weightless, it's because there's no normal force acting on you, not because you have no gravity. If you feel less weight than normal, the normal force acting on you is less than usual. If you feel like you weigh like your normal self, it's because the ground is pushing up on you like regular. And if you feel heavier than normal, and there have been plenty of times where you probably feel extra heavy, uh, it's because the normal force is larger. Think of scenarios in which you're at the bottom of a roller coaster loop. You go down this hill, you get down here, that roller coaster pushes you back up. You're going to feel heavier than usual. You feel like you're getting squished into the ground, okay? But you're not actually getting squished into the ground. What's really happening is the ground is pushing up harder on you. So when we talk about weight, I want you to keep this in mind. We're talking about the normal force, okay? Keep this diagram in your mind and also keep a scenario in your mind where you're in free fall. When you're in free fall, there's no surface at all. So if I were to be in free fall, would that scale be pushing up on me? Would there be anything for it to push up on? No, it's falling with me. We're both in free fall. So let's get a read zero. Does that mean I actually have zero weight? No. Keep that in mind as I go through this next set of stuff. And this next set of stuff are dealing with elevator problems. Elevator problems often give students trouble. Heck, it gives me trouble. I always have to stop and think. Uh, it, it is what it is. I mean, elevators can be a little weird in terms of physics. But in all reality, if you stop and think, which is always okay, there's nothing wrong with slowing down and thinking. If you stop and think about it a little bit, you will know if you are um, accelerating up or down or traveling at constant speed or whatever. And these elevator problems are scenarios in which we'll say, do you feel heavier or lighter than usual? Or if you feel heavier, are you accelerating up or down or not at all? Yada, yada, yada. So let's go through it right now. We've got this person just hanging out here on this elevator. Elevator is going nowhere. You're going nowhere. You're going to feel in that scenario that I already drew, your weight is being canceled out by the normal force. So I'm not going to give that situation. What I'm going to now say is now this. You and the elevator 
are going to begin to accelerate upward, right? The very beginning, when you go on your elevator ride, you get that push upward. Now, think about yourself on an elevator. If you've never been in an elevator, I'm sorry. If you have, write it again after this video. You'll know what I'm talking about a little bit more. Maybe you've already paid attention to this. When the elevator begins to go up, you feel extra heavy. You feel heavier than normal. You feel like you're getting squished into the ground. And this is for a reason. Let's talk about it. We've got our weight down still. That's still going to be there. Beep, beep, beep. FG is down. But now you and the elevator are accelerating up. That means you're experiencing, I'm going to do a uh, free body, uh, not free body diagram, uh, Newton's second law over here. You're experiencing a net force, M-A, right? Now we have a normal force. I'm going to draw that in a minute. There's still a normal force, right? The scale is still supporting us. And we still have mg. And those are the only forces acting on you. So you have your normal force, the scale. You have the weight down. And you have your net force, which is the difference between the two. That's all still there. If you're accelerating up, I want to I get normal force by itself. I'm doing this for a reason. Your normal force will equal your weight plus the net force acting on you, which is the overall acceleration. That means that scale is pushing up on you your original weight plus the additional force necessary to accelerate you up. That means that this normal force is bigger than usual, which in this situation you feel heavy. Are you actually heavier than normal? Did you just all of a sudden gain weight? No. If I were to kind of show that extra little, this is the additional force that the elevator is pushing up on. And if it had to push up with a really large force, then our normal force would be massive and that could actually kill you and that would be a problem. Eh, not good. So now let's get a new scenario. This is all always going to be true. You're never going to have a different weight. You're always going to be in this elevator. Okay, but now we're on our way up. And the elevator isn't always accelerating up. It will, let's say you're going up a nice big building, it will eventually reach a nice constant velocity and it'll just cruise on the way up. And so now I'm going to describe that spot. We're going to say our velocity is constant. Okay? Well, when we have constant velocity, and I'm not even going to tell you, let's set up the Newton's second law. Newton's second law, sigma f equals constant velocity. Am I going to write zero or ma here? Constant velocity, zero. And then that's going to equal the upward force, which I'm not going to draw yet, but it's still that normal force minus that downward force, which is the weight. Interesting, right? Now let's set the FN equal, okay, this is a situation in which you have a normal force which is equal to your weight, which means you're going to feel normal or regular might be the better word of saying because I don't want you to mix it up with normal force, but regular. When you're traveling with constant velocity in an elevator, in an airplane, in a car, anywhere, you will always feel normal. You won't detect the extra force because there is no extra force. Cool, right? Let's get to another scenario. Now we're nearing the top of our elevator ride, right? And now, of course, the elevator needs to slow down. So you are moving up, but you're going to experience an acceleration down, right? Now let's think about this. Think about yourself when you're at the top of the elevator, when you're nearing the top, and you experience that acceleration down. How do you feel? Take a second and think about it. Of course, I just knocked my uh, camera here. Oops, well, if everything's all different angle, I'm sorry about that. So how do you feel when you're getting to the top? Yeah, I, I think a lot of you will realize you feel like you can jump and hit the ceiling. You feel like you're getting launched down to space. You feel less weight. So before we even do our dynamics, our Fn should be less than our Fg, right? So let's set up our dynamics. Right, F equals MA, but look at this. What way is my acceleration? It's down, ready? So F equals negative MA. I'm experiencing a downward overall acceleration. That's gonna come from my upper force FN minus my downward first force F MG. And I'm gonna rearrange this for FN because that's the thing that determines weight or how I feel. So I'm going to add my mg over. I'm going to see that my normal force is equal to mg minus ma. And that should make sense that I'm going to feel my weight but lessened by whatever rate I'm accelerating downward with. So I will feel lighter. 
Yeah, and that's actually really all of the elevator style problems. Just think about it. On the journey back down, we're going to accelerate downward. Negative MA will equal FA minus MG. We're going to feel lighter when we, in the very beginning of our elevator right down, we feel like the floor is falling out from below us. We're going to feel a little lighter, a little bit weightless. Not a lot, but a little bit. Hopefully not a lot, unless you're on one of those you know, like the Tower of Terror. I think that's still a thing. Well, at least it was when I was younger. Um, and then when, it, when you're approaching the bottom level, the elevator needs to slow you down. So it's going to be accelerating upward. And so it's back to that original scenario where you're going to feel heavy. And in the between, when you're traveling at constant speed, you're still going to feel normal. So when you feel normal, if everything's closed, you don't really know if you're going up or down. I mean, you really can't tell. As long as you're at constant speed. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple other videos. Uh, I think I'll have one video dedicated to tension and one video dedicated to a couple abstract style problems like a lawnmower problem and a few others. I think that's good for this video. Um, elevator problems that can be tricky. Don't make them trickier than they need to be. Think it through. Are you feeling lighter or not? Set up your dynamics. Take your time. And that's it for now. Thank you.